All right, so most of you are probably watching this video because you've come from our DIY install video of our C-Cane 10 and a quarter inch Android touchscreen head unit. Uh, or maybe you have an RS Nav unit that's similar to this and you're trying to figure out how to get it set up. That's what we're going over in this video. How to set up your wireless Android Auto or CarPlay, the general settings of the unit, how to connect your phone to it, all that stuff. So if that's what you're looking for, you've come to the right video, stay tuned. The first thing that you want to make sure you do, you want to go in here and if you've got an aux connection or an Audi AMI connection like I do, pardon how filthy it is, uh, you need to make sure that the supplied wire is connected. Okay, If you don't have this connected, you won't be able to hear any of your audio. So make sure whatever wire was supplied with your unit, you have that connected to the vehicle. All right, so when you first turn on your Android unit, this is what it's gonna look like. This is the main menu. Let's talk about how to navigate through this. So you've got some apps here, and right now these are the only apps that I have enabled on mine, but these are gonna what you're gonna be using to navigate through and change things. Over here, you've got a sidebar of some quick links. Uh, this top button here, this little weird kind of house shape button, that's your home button. So if you go into anything random, so if you like, you go over here and you hit the apps button, when you wanna go back to the main menu, you press that to return to the main menu. This is gonna be a quick link to navigation, this is to music, and this is to your phone. And then down here is your settings button over here. Right here, Audi MMI, that is what's gonna allow you to switch between your Android unit and your MMI so that you can use your normal MMI functions to get back to your Android home screen. You just press on the screen. As you move through here, the Bluetooth, that button here is what you're gonna to use to connect your phone to the actual unit. Uh, you have some other things like YouTube, Google Maps. You can't use those unless you have a Wi-Fi connection. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But uh, anything that requires you know, an internet connection as if you would use it on your phone, you'd have to have an internet connection for the unit as well. That'd be you know, a module you plug into the USB line that came with the system or your cell phone hotspot. Uh, the apps button, you click this, it's going to show you a few other things and you can swipe around and look at, and we'll talk about some of these a little bit later. The main thing you want to know from this one is the reboot button. The reboot button might come in handy when it comes to some of your wireless CarPlay or Android Auto options uh, when you're resetting certain things. If you take your finger and you swipe down on this screen, you're going to come up with this. Uh, this is just another kind of like quick menu and you can quick adjust your, uh, well I can't do it, yeah there you go, you can quick adjust your brightness. Uh, you also have the quick links here, your settings, you have your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, things like that. So we'll go back to this. Over here, your that arrow on the top right there, if you go into something, you start going through menus, use that arrow to go backwards. This right here will bring up all the apps that you're currently using, uh, just like you would on you know, kind of your phone. You can swipe to the left to disable them. This button here, the one with the little star that will turn your screen on and off to turn it back on, you just press on again, shows the time, and then it shows the connections that you have set up for the phone. So that's your basic navigation. Let's talk about settings. So we're gonna click this button here. Here is your main settings menu, everything from audio to reverse view and everything in between. So we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. Audio, this is just all the options from this and it comes to the audio of your unit and how it plays with your MMI. The only thing I'm gonna talk about on this one is your Android system master volume. You don't wanna max it out because with the Audi amps and whatnot. If you max it out and you start playing with that, it can really distort the sound. So uh, it's recommended to leave it around 25. Go back. You have all sorts of different settings in here though. Navigation guidance volume, volume when reversing, your sound effects. This is like your equalizer where you can go and really fine tune everything. I haven't messed with it. I like the way my you know OEM system sounds, so I'm okay with how it is. Language, that's pretty self-explanatory. Choose language you want. When you go to screen, this is how you can adjust brightness. Uh, there's dark, medium, bright, uh, screen off, headlight status, screen brightness. You can play around with these. Network, this is where you would go in here to uh, basically connect to Wi-Fi and things like that. So if we click like the Wi-Fi button, it'll bring up, and for you guys, it's gonna be really difficult for you to see. There you go, I adjust my settings. You can see that you can connect to an actual Wi-Fi setting. So that's how you would do that. 
Okay, let's talk about how to get your phone connected to your Android unit. All your Bluetooth features need to be done through this button here, the little green underlined Bluetooth button. So you wanna click on that. And then when you come into this, it should be up here on the dial uh, screen. And what you wanna do is go down and click Bluetooth. First, go to Bluetooth settings. When you're on here, you wanna make sure that connect automatically to a known device is enabled, ring on incoming calls enabled, and then it'll show you found devices. So you can see that it's already found my phone, even though it's disconnected. If we go down here to Bluetooth search, and you press the search button, that is what's gonna make this thing look around for any nearby devices, and it should bring up my phone. Now, if it doesn't bring it up on this, you can't see it, try it one more time and refresh it, it should come up. Otherwise, you can go into your phone's Bluetooth system and look for the device name, which is G-O-C-S-D-K. And when you find that, you click on it, and it should bring up a request to pair the unit to your phone. And same thing on this. If it brings it up and it actually shows your device and you click on your device here, then it should prompt your phone to pair it. And once again, the pin code is right there and it's 0000, at least for my unit. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up my screen record here and we're going to try and find the unit in my phone. You can see it's already connected to my car. If we scroll down, we don't see it. Then there's other available devices. You can see it says G-O-C-S-D-K. I'm gonna click on that. And it's going to try and pair to the device. Once it does that, it should give me a prompt to enter a pin code, which right there it is. I can't really move this keyboard, so I'm sorry you have to bear with me, but I'm gonna put in the four zeros. I think that was four there. And then we're gonna hit pair. And now the phone is connected to the vehicle. I'm going to allow it to access my contacts and then immediately go into the settings for the unit and you want to come here and you want to disable audio. If you don't disable audio, then what's going to happen is the Android unit is going to fight with your Audi MMI to play audio. And what I'll do is it will just constantly pause and play your music and that will get really annoying. So disable audio under the Android unit and you won't have that problem. All right, let's talk about how to connect your phone to Android Auto. And the first thing you want to do is on your phone, locate your Android Auto settings. So that's what we're going to look for. We're just going to search for Android Auto. And we're going to find it here under Advanced Features. Once it brings up your Android Auto system, you're gonna go in here and you wanna make sure that you've got your settings correct. And the one that you need to change, I would enable Start Android Auto while locked. That way it just automatically connects to your car whenever you get it going. Make sure it says Start Android Auto automatically. Always have that on. And then go down and you want to find your setting about wireless Android Auto and make sure that is enabled. Once you have all these settings enabled, we can go to the car and show you how to connect there. Okay, so now that you're back at the Android main menu, you also want to make sure on your phone you have your Wi-Fi enabled because your phone will connect to the unit via Wi-Fi for wireless Android Auto. Disclaimer, if you're running an Apple product and you want to know how to connect with Apple CarPlay, check the link in the description below for a video from RSNav that'll show you how to do that. This is for Android Auto because that's what I have. So the app that you're going to use, not only just for Android Auto, but for uh, CarPlay as well, is Z-Link. So we're going to click into this and you can see that mine is already enabled. Um, if I go and let me disable this and I'll show you what the actual app looks like. Let me just turn off my Wi-Fi here. We'll go home, let that reboot, bring it up. All right. So that's what the Z-Link app looks like. Let me adjust my settings so you can see a little bit better. Um, and you can see that there's settings, help, about, and over here there's some buttons here. So these buttons over here, that button there is, shows you your system information, asks you to check for updates, which you'd have to be connected to Wi-Fi for. Uh, the blue means CarPlay, the uh, orange means uh, Android Auto for wireless. So it shows you that those are both capable. Uh, if you go into settings on the app, you wanna go in here, you can choose your CarPlay icon. Well, of course, we have it on the Audi option which you don't really ever see in the screen here. Uh, Auto reconnect I have turned on. HD display enhancement, you want that turned on so you got a nice clear picture. Uh, I paused third party media app while running Z-Link. I've got that turned off. You wanna make sure Android Auto is turned on and wireless auto is turned on. And then those are the only things that you really need to worry about. 
But once you do that, when you get in here and you start this for the first time, it will automatically connect to your car and it'll walk you through the steps of connecting. It was really, really easy to do. Uh, but the only problem with this setup is once you disconnect Android Auto, uh, like I disconnected mine. So now I'm gonna go on my phone. I know it's bouncing around a little bit. And I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi back on. And once I do, it won't automatically reconnect to Android Auto. And there's not like a button here for refresh. So in order to get connected again, we're gonna go home. We're gonna hit the apps button. We're gonna reboot the system. And this will show you how fast it connects as well. So this is gonna reset the actual Android system and we're going to let it restart and come back up. Now, when it does this, it'll probably stop the recording of my phone when it connects, just as a heads up, I'll get it going immediately though. I'm gonna let this happen in real time here. Okay, so we're back at the main menu. And it should here momentarily auto connect, launch the Z-Link app on its own and connect to Android Auto. All right, like I said, my phone cut off, but I just immediately started recording again. And we're here in the Android Auto main menu on the uh, vehicle. You can see it's reconnected. You've got your menu over here and then off to the right is showing the music uh, that you've got displayed, whatever you're playing, and you can control it from there. You have your main menu here and to access that, you wanna hit this button on the top left. It's just like kind of little white button that'll bring the menu up and down. Uh, on the left side, you've got some quick options. So that's got my YouTube music. You can see I've got Waze, Spotify, and all this stuff runs off of your phone's internet connection. You don't have to have an internet connection for the actual unit. This is all off of your phone. Uh, you've got your settings, you've got your messaging apps and things like that. And I've been running this for a few days and I haven't had any issues with it dropping calls. I haven't had any issues with it dropping music or anything like that. But the one thing you need to be aware of, we talked about the one audio issue with your settings on your phone. Uh, another issue is it could potentially be playing music, but you can't hear any audio. So the way that you fix that is you have to make one adjustment in your MMI settings. So we are going to go back here and go to our MMI and you want to go to your media and on the top right, click source and you have all your source connections. Uh, mine was on just my, my note 10 plus and I could not figure out why I wasn't hearing audio. Turns out, remember in the beginning of the video, I showed you you had to have that uh, auxiliary cord or your AMI converter cord plugged into your AMI. That's so that you have the option to click on external audio input. Once you click on external audio input, you should start hearing your music when you're running CarPlay or Android Auto. So that's really important. Don't forget to do that. Uh, but yeah, this is a really, really cool system. Uh, it works really well. It's really, really nice having Waze uh, running on here because when you're driving, it zooms way far out. You can see a whole lot more than you can on your cell phone. It's, it's really, really nice. Let's talk about a couple of things you want to immediately address when you get this installed and turned on. First thing you want to do, go into your menu and go all the way down to reverse view. This is going to talk about what camera the Android unit is using the input for, for your reversing camera. So almost every C7 has a reverse camera. When I turned this on, mine was set to this AHD camera CAN bus. And when I would put it in reverse, the screen would change as if it was bringing up the camera, but the camera would be blank. So you wanna make sure you click OEM, or I'm sorry, Audi OEM CAN bus. Then when you go into reverse, it will use your OEM rear viewing camera. After that, we wanna go and click the system button. The next thing you need to change when you get to system, you wanna go over here and click factory settings. It's gonna prompt you to enter a passcode. The passcode is 1314. So we're gonna put that in and hit okay. And you go in here, you wanna to go to car mode. Car mode is what's going to determine what MMI system the Android unit's looking for. So let me show you. We already showed you, you know, flipping in between the Audi and my, you saw that it worked for my car. When I first got this thing and uh, turned on, it was on this one down here, it says 01 reserved. And that's what it looked like. And I, I thought I had an issue with my wiring. I thought something was like a pinched wire or whatnot, but it turns out that it was just from 
this. So we're going to go, and there's three different options for C7s. You want to find the one for you. So my car is a 2013 C7 with the 3G MMI system. So here it is, 12 to 15 C7 3G MMI. I click on that. And now, let me go to home. When I go back to Audi MMI, it brings up the correct MMI system. So once you've got your correct MMI system uh, selected, we're going to go back out to that menu. We're going to go up here to where it says Android settings. There's a lot of different things you can play around in here with, but most of them are for external device inputs that we don't have plugged into this. But the one thing I do want to bring up for you on this one is UI theme. So if we go in here, there's two options, MIB3 and 3G MMI. What this will change is your home screen of your Android unit. So if I click on the 3G MMI and I go to the home screen, now I've got this fancy looking thing. And you know, it is pretty cool. Uh, it's got a spin wheel to navigate through. To change the car here, if yours comes up and doesn't have a C7, if you just press on the car and hold it, it'll bring up a bunch of different options. Uh, unfortunately for C7, the only one that's available is a white C7. C7.5 has a silver A6. You can upload your own artwork. I don't know what the parameters are for that uh, in terms of you know pixels, things like that. I'll look around in that, but you have that option to add something in with the USB input device. Uh, now, I will say this, I drove around with this for a little bit, and this is a much more difficult system to use, especially when you're driving, because you have to spin this wheel to find the thing that you want to uh, use. So it looks cooler, but I don't like to keep it on here. Uh, so I'm going to go back into the system settings. I'm going to change it back to the original layout, the MIB3, because this is just far more er uh, ergonomic, easy to use, especially when driving. And the last thing I really want to talk about here in the system settings is if you go down to uh, MCU settings, this just has a bunch of little things that you can adjust on your unit and you can play around with a lot of it. Just remember what it is when you first do it. That way, if you do something and it's weird, you know how to get it back. But um, as we go down here, like I said, there's just a ton of stuff you can do right here. Measurement unit. That's how you choose between kilometers an hour, miles an hour, Celsius and uh, gallons. I have mine set to the UK setting, which is miles per hour, but temperature in Celsius and fuel remaining in gallons. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm using Celsius to kind of learn what my CAN sensor, which displays IETs in Celsius, uh, to see what they are in relation to ambient air temperature in Celsius. Uh, so that's just me. You can have it in Fahrenheit if you want to. Okay, so now we're back at the home screen. Uh, another thing I want to talk to you about is this little thing called dashboard. So this brings up a digital dashboard and it's got your tachometer and it's got your speedometer. Also shows uh, if your parking brake is enabled and if someone doesn't have their seatbelt on. Obviously, I'm sitting in the car in the garage, I don't have my seatbelt on, so it shows in red. It shows fuel remaining in gallons, and then it shows the ambient air temperature, right? Uh, like I said in the last thing, I've got it in Celsius. A tip though, if you turn this on, you check this, and this says like negative 32 degrees Celsius, and this says like zero gallons gas or some ridiculous number, that means one of your wiring harness connections isn't correct, and you need to open up everything and make sure everything is fully seated, especially that quadrilock wiring harness. Uh, that should fix that issue. In driving around with this for a little while, I've noticed that the tachometer is spot on, but the miles per hour, uh, it seems to be about four to five mile an hour fast. So that doesn't seem to be very accurate. And let's talk just about a couple more little things here. Um, I haven't had the time to really go through crazy in depth and check out every little thing. But if you go down to apps, uh, a couple things here, you've, you've got Chrome as a browser, you've got Google Maps. Once again, you have to have internet to be able to access those. This little thing here that almost looks like a SIM card that I go prime, uh, that is the built in GPS navigation for this system. Now, if I go to Google Maps here, let me turn down the uh, actual ISO. So you guys can see this. You can see that it doesn't really show anything other than it remembers my last location. I'm here kind of in Wilmington, North Carolina. So I'll recenter it, but it's not doing anything. It doesn't have an internet connection. And so it's not doing anything for my, my Google Maps because that's relying on internet. Now, if I go back and I click on this, the iGo Prime, that is the built-in navigation GPS that uh, if you remember when you plugged in all your wiring harnesses, there is a GPS antenna connection and that's what this is. And this thing actually works pretty decently well. So if in a pinch you need it, if for whatever reason your phone's not working, you can, you can use this GPS that's built in. 
So there's lots of different settings you can get in here and mess with as well. So, you know, have at it, have fun with that. It's not the smoothest or fastest, but it still works. Okay, so we're back at this menu once again. And another thing I wanna point out is the Google Play Store. This is where you can go in and download other apps. So you have to be able to sign in with your Google Play account. I don't have Wi-Fi connected, so it's not gonna do anything for me, but uh, you can download other apps to this once you're connected to Wi-Fi. We go over here, there's a voice search. Um, let's see what cart PMS is. Oh, that's your tire uh, pressure monitoring system. So that's kind of neat. I don't know how to get this connected. I might play around with this and, and see what I need to do. I don't know if I need to install anything else, maybe like an OBD2 dongle, but that's kind of neat that it'll show you all four wheels. So something for me to look forward to messing around with. Uh, you've got a music playing app, a video app, uh, some other GPS thing. You've got a user manual and I'll adjust the brightness on here. This is your user manual for the entire unit. You can zoom in and scroll around and go through this. There's not like a quick look function, I don't think, to go to a certain page or like a menu that you can click and find something. But in a pinch, if you need to use it, it is built into the actual uh, unit itself. And then we'll go back in here again. Um, there's a couple other things in Netflix. You have Fortress Z-Length, uh, DAB Plus, I'm not sure what that is. You have a file expander there that you can look through stuff. So there's lots of stuff on here that you can really play around with, especially if you get this connected to Wi-Fi. Okay, so that was just a quick rundown of the basic features and the basic setup of this unit. There's a lot you can do with it and it'll just take time to play around with it. If you're looking for information online, uh, you can look up stuff for RC Kane. They have a YouTube channel. Their stuff is kind of basic, uh, but you can also go and use a lot of RS nav tutorials because it's gonna be the same for this. There are some dis differences in hardware between this unit and the like RS nav S4, uh, but overall it functions and performs the same in terms of the software and how you update it and things like that. But if you guys have any questions in particular about how to do something, leave them in the comments below. Uh, there should be links in the description for things for the CarPlay, for if you have an Apple unit, uh, as well as a link to the product here so you can find it and purchase it. But uh, thanks for watching. As always, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.